Hello everyone, welcome to another video of mine, Commando Blay, and this is another Chelsea transfer video where I give you guys all the updates regarding all the latest news regarding Chelsea, surrounding Chelsea at this present moment in time. I'm going to be giving the latest update on Kai Havertz and potentially can Chelsea sign Kai Havertz without Champions Football after a abysmal thrashing at Bramall Lane against Sheffield United. We speak about Man City and their um, UEFA ban, their Champions League ban being overturned outright completely. We're discussing what implications that has on Chelsea in this current moment in time. And also Antonio Rudiger, what he has reported you know, reported by the Athletic and also me speaking about Onana and Dean Henderson, the two keepers that Lampard admires and would like to replace Kepa for the long term. But before I do get into all of that, make sure you smash like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification and comment down below your thoughts and on in the comment section below on each topic that I do speak about. But without further ado, let's get straight into it. I'll start off with Kai Havertz and the latest news regarding him. Now, obviously, after our loss against Sheffield United, it was looking more and more unlikely that Chelsea we're going to secure Champions League football for the first time since October. Top four was out of Chelsea's fate. It was out of our hands completely and we had to rely on other results. Now, last night, Bournemouth did a massive favour for us. They beat Leicester City 4-1, thrashing. And Chelsea still remain in third place despite United playing Southampton tonight. But the fact remains that Chelsea still have top four in their destiny. They have it in their fate. It's up to them. With three games remaining. If we win our last three games, Chelsea will secure top four. It's as simple as that. Now, where does this leave Kai Havertz in the balance? Now, in a scenario that Chelsea do not make top four, does that simply make it difficult for Kai Havertz to sign for Chelsea? Now, regarding the Champions League thing with Havertz, it appears to me more about the financial implications from not getting Champions League football rather than Kai not wanting to actually join Chelsea because of Champions League football because he still wants to join Chelsea. He's enticed by a project, you know, the, the persuasive techniques by Timo Werner, Michael Balak, Lampard, the three-year plan that Lampard outlaid to Kai Havertz. He still wants to join Chelsea. You know, he's already handed the transfer request to Bayer Leverkusen. He wants to leave Bayer Leverkusen, reported by Matt Law, Christian Falk. Now, Christian Falk was saying, which was contradicting to, to what the reports are saying, was yesterday morning after Sheffield, game was essentially that even though Kai Havertz wants to leave Bayer Leverkusen handing the transfer request because Bayer Leverkusen are not playing Europa League, uh, well, not playing in the, in, in the Champions League, he would like to also move to Champions League club. Now, if Chelsea don't secure Champions League, it does make it more difficult, but I do believe Kai Havertz will join regardless, um, you know, because of our, you know, our project, where we want to be in the next two, three years, uh, the plans of us getting back to being elite, one of the elite's best again. I think he has won that over the lure of London, playing in the Premier League, playing Chelsea, one of the best clubs in Europe. And of course, with the financial implication of Bayern Munich and Real Madrid, they want to wait until a summer transfer window in a 2021 season. It puts Chelsea a massive advantage. And I think the Chelsea will sign Kai Havertz regardless of Champions League football. Obviously, Champions League does make it much easier. I'm not saying it doesn't because, of course, with the Champions League, you get the luxury of more... Um, you know, obviously more persuasive, you become more persuasive, you become more attractive proposition and also finances. Now, as Matt Law reports a few days ago, there's an article where Chelsea will extend and increase their budget by £50 million if we secure Champions League football. That could be difference between us signing a centre-back or not. So that has massive indications. I think that I think I have us all signed regardless and it's good news. Nothing to worry about. I know I've seen a lot of people on social media getting worried and nervous about us not securing Champions League football, leading to us not signing Kai Havertz. I think Kai Havertz will sign regardless. You know, his purse terms will not be a problem and we need to calm down regarding that. Now, the next story I want to talk about is Man City. Now, obviously today, the big news at 9.30 this morning was Cass providing an update on Man City's, you know, court case, a uh, court of arbitration for sport. And what they reported was that Man City's, you know, original two-year ban from the Champions League football from the Champions League with a 30 million euro fine has been completely overturned, not even reduced, just like Chelsea's ban. This has been completely overturned. City do not have to serve the ban whatsoever. They will be allowed to play in the next season of Champions League and their fine of 30 million euros has been reduced to 10 million euros. Now, if you ask me, I think it's a complete farce. I think it's an embarrassment from UEFA, an absolute embarrassing institution and it's, it's fraudulent. It generally is fraudulent. Now, I'll give you my thoughts opinions now. Now, obviously, UEFA did an investigation in Man City for financial fair play. They were breached. They were, you know, charged because they breached financial fair play regulations. Now, because of the time date between 2012 and 2016. Now, UEFA did an investigation, and the investigation took place for about two to three years. So they did heavy investigation, investigating for two to three years for Cass to overturn it in three months. That is embarrassing because it essentially implies that UEFA, they don't have any control. They've asserted this ban on Man City for two years. And the Court of Arbitration for Sport have completely overturned that. 
So UEFA are powerless in this situation. They're supposed to be the governing body for football. They're in control of Champions League, the European football, the Euros, the Europa League. And they've been overturned by Man City by one specific club who've not really given that much effort. For me, it's an embarrassment, a complete embarrassment. And it really puts, you know, puts FFP in the bin it really does ffp is dusted in my eyes but the financial fair play regulations is non-existent because how can man city from that period of time because let's be honest they're not a gargantuan institution where they're making incredible amounts of streams of income in, in you know amounts of sponsorships and revenues you know like a man united around which is barcelona because they're not that big of a club yet when it comes to merchandise and the actual fan base of the club they definitely breached financial fair play regulations. Even the CAS update provided that, yes, City breached it, but it wasn't as severe as UEFA stated. But they've still breached it. That's the matter of the fact. And obviously, if they still breached it, that puts FFP as a joke. So, you know, if, if they're not getting charged with FFP, how does that stop PSG owners? How does that stop Roman Abramovich or Real Madrid or Barcelona spending £500 million this summer? Because they know that FFP is a complete joke now. It's not been taken seriously. And it's put a massive statement of football now that FFP does not have to be taken seriously. And I think it's a complete embarrassment for me, UEFA. Absolute embarrassment. And honestly, they just hang their heads in shame. If, done a, if they've done a two, three investigation, that's been overturned by the Court of Arbitration for Sport in three months, hang your head in shame because that is embarrassing. And of course, the implications it has is fifth place is now not available for Champions League football. Therefore, Chelsea have to secure top four if we want a Champions League place for next season. But I still think Chelsea will secure it. Now, moving on to the next report, I want to speak about, um, of course, the report by The Athletic regarding the goalkeeping situation. And they say that Andre Onana sits high among Chelsea's options to potentially replace Kepa. The stopper is available for around €30 million. Euro pounds. Uh, sorry, 30 million euros, and Chelsea are in regular contact with his representatives. Onana is attracted to join Chelsea also. He recently followed Chelsea on Instagram and also liked a few up posts just to give you guys a bit of further information. But Lampard is also an admirer of Dean Henderson from, of course, Sheffield United. He's had a terrific season, of course. Now, Dean Henderson, he is currently on loan from Manchester United, so there is a bit of difficulty there. But what gives us the upper hand is what we can persuade Dean Henderson to come to Chelsea, you know, make him our number one. United have just given De Gea a brand new five-year contract on £250,000 a week, and they've given their trust and support in De Gea. There is no way Dean Henderson would want to return to Man United being United's number two because he's better than that. He He's a top class key world club potential. He's proven that at Sheffield United and he's going to want the first team football at a top club elsewhere. Now, if Chelsea offer, in my opinion, in the in the, you know region of 40 to 50 million pounds, then if of course if Dean Henderson forces that move, I think Dean Henderson could sign for Chelsea. However, it'd be more costly, and of course, it would be more difficult to get the Dean Henderson deal over the line compared to Anana, who's available for a much cheaper price. Of course, they're not saying to a direct rival. Ajax, we have a good relationship with Chelsea. We've already signed Hakim Ziyech from them. And of course, um, you know, he is on our shortlist and we have had long-term interest on Arna Shreya's Kepa. Now, with the Kepa situation, again, I have to keep stressing, it's difficult to offload. You know, he's on high wages, £200,000 a week. And, of course, he's on a long six-year contract, unless, uh, you know, like a Valencia or Sevilla offer the two-year loan deal. I don't see how Kepa does essentially this summer. So, I think that Lampard would like to sort out the goalkeeping situation. I think that it's somewhere that he wants to improve on. Kepa's been below par this season, sub-par performances. And of course, he's an admirer of Dean Henderson. For me, my first choice would be Dean Henderson. I think that, you know, he's young, he's Premier League proven, he's done, he's had so many clean sheets for Sheffield United this season. You know, he's got world class potential, fantastic reflexes, concentration, shot stopping abilities. Distribution can be improved on, and he's young, so he's only going to improve and get better. I think Dean Henderson is the one Chelsea should sign, but Anana. He is showing a lot of promise with the Champions League experience, of course, with a cheaper fee. But who would you guys prefer, Onana or Dean Henderson? Leave me your thoughts opinions in the comment section below. But the last report I wanted to mention and talk about is, of course, the Antonio Rudiger situation. Again, the same report by The Athletic. And they're reporting Antonio Rudiger's two years left on his Chelsea contract. Talks are yet to take place over a new deal and there is no offer on the table. Chelsea are aiming to buy another centre-back with Declan Rice as one of their main targets for this role. Now, of course, this is good news in my opinion because I think Rudiger's, you know, he's not the best centre-back. He's been quite poor in his last couple of seasons. And of course, as the report was stated by The Athletic, we haven't actually had an offer on the table, which is good. Um, I think that we can still cash in on Rudiger get a decent price for him which can we can you know reinvest back into the squad i think he has, he has a lot of liabilities he's aerially not great he loses a lot of his jewels um he lacks a lot of discipline concentration makes a lot of silly errors and i think that he is 
are definitely centre back we can cash in on because he's a massive asset that we can get money from. And I think that likes of Zuma, Christian, and Tomori have got more promise, younger, and in my opinion, much, much better compared to Antonio Rudiger. And it's good news that talks have not taken place and Chelsea are looking to sell Rudiger in the summer window. So that is good news in my opinion. But what do you guys think? Leave me your thoughts in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the Chelsea transfer today, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell notification. And I will see you guys for my next video. Peace.